In chapter 5, we are going to discuss um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And this is indeed the, one of the most important and powerful ways to use linear algebra to analyze the system. So, um, let's first look at the definition. So, eigenvectors of a matrix are vectors on which the transformation acts as a scalar. So, what I mean is like if you multiply A into the eigenvector, then you should get x multiplied by some scalar. So, let's look at the example below. So, suppose that um, T is a linear transformation from R2 to R2, which is given by T of x1 and x2 equals to 3001 times the vector x. Then, if you apply, say, E1, the first standard vector, then this gives you, well, 3001 times 1, 0, which equals to 3, 0. But we can factor out 3 from the given vector, so this is the same as 3 times 1, 0. That equals to 3, E1. And also, T of E2, well, actually, this is the same as the second column of the given matrix. So this equals to 0, 1. Or in other words, we have 1 times E2. So, an eigenvector of an n by n matrix is a non-zero vector x such that a times x equals to lambda times x. So, we call this Greek letter as the lambda. And the scalar lambda is called as the eigenvalue of a if there is a non-trivial solution of the given matrix equation. So, in this case, we call x as an eigenvalue corresponding to the given lambda. So suppose that A is given by this 2 by 2 matrix, and we'll see whether 4 is an eigenvalue of the given matrix. So basically, by definition, we have to find x such that um, Ax equals to 4 times x. In other words, we have to solve the given matrix equation 0, negative 2, negative 4, 2 times x1, x2 equals to 4 times x, which equals to 4x1, 4x2. But we can rewrite the left hand side as um, negative 2x2, and I guess negative 4x1 plus 2x2, and this equals to. 4x1 and 4x2. So from here, we get um, negative 2x2 equals to 4x1, or 4x1 plus 2x2 equals to 0. Or if you divide by negative 2 for the both sides, we get x2 equals to, I guess, negative 2x1. And for the second equation, we get negative 4x1 plus 2x2 equals to 4x2. Or if you move 2x2 to the other side, then this gives you negative 4x1 equals to 2x2. Or if you divide by 2 for the both sides, um, we get the same equation as the first one. So the solution set for this matrix equation is given by x equals to, so we have x1 and x2 equals to negative 2x1. So we can write this as x1 times 1 and negative 2. So in this case, because we have non-trivial solution, we can tell that 4 is an eigenvalue of the given matrix. Okay, so let's look at another example about eigenvectors. So suppose that A is given by this matrix, and U and V are vectors in R2, then we want to verify whether these two vectors are eigenvectors for the given matrix. So basically, by definition, if you multiply by A into U, then we should get a multiple of the vector U. So if you calculate this, we get um, this matrix times 1, 1. Or in other words, this gives you, I guess, negative 2. And negative 4 plus 2 equals to negative 2. But if you factor out by negative 2, then this gives you 1, 1. But we know that u equals to 1, 1. So this gives you negative 2 times the vector u. Similarly, a times v equals to 0, negative 2, negative 4, 2. 
multiplied by negative 1, 1. And this equals to um, negative 2 and 4 plus 2, which equals to 6. But this factor is not a scaled version of V. So V is not an eigenvector of A. So in conclusion, we can tell that U, the vector U, is an eigenvector of A with associated eigenvalue equals to negative 2 over here. But V is not an eigenvector of the given matrix. So let's look at what the eigenvectors mean in geometry. So let us draw vectors u and v, and let's also draw a u and a v in R2 to see what eigenvectors mean in a language of a linear transformation. So this is R2, and we know that the vector u is at 1, 1, so u is over here, and v is given by negative 1, 1, which is located over here. And we've calculated that a times u equals to negative 2, negative 2. So if you plot that on the plane, then a times u is located at this place. And we know that a times v equals to um, negative 2 and 6. So here we had a u and a v, so it should be somewhere around here. So what do we see? We see that a u and u are on the same line. So here, a u, a times u, give back vector in the same direction of u, but possibly it is scaled. But a times v is totally different at oriented vector compared to the vector v. So let's say x is an eigenvector of the given matrix, and lambda is an eigenvalue, then we know that by definition, a times x should equal to lambda times x. Or in other words, if you move things to the left-hand side, then we get this equation. But this is certainly equivalent to ax minus lambda times i times x equals to zero. Or in other words, we can tell that a minus lambda i times x equals to zero. So basically, lambda is eigenvalue of n by n matrix if and only if this matrix equation, a minus lambda i times x equals to zero, has a non-trivial solution. So here, the set of all solutions to the given equation, a minus lambda i times x equals to zero, or the null space of a minus lambda i is a subspace of Rn, and we call this as the eigenspace of a corresponds to lambda. And in this case, we're going to denote the eigenspace of a corresponds to lambda as e sub lambda. Okay, so suppose that a is given by this 3 by 3 matrix, and suppose also that um, an eigenvalue of a is given by 2, and let us explore how to find the basis for the corresponding eigenspace. So first of all, by definition, the eigenspace corresponds to lambda equals to 2, where e sub 2 is the same as the null space of a minus 2i. So we have to calculate a minus 2i, which is given by, I guess, 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 3, minus 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2. And this equals to 0, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, and 1. So if you have the matrix, then we have to solve the homogeneous equation a minus 2i times x equals to 0 to get the basis for the null space. Or in other words, we have to find the REF of this matrix. So this is row equivalent to, so I guess we can simply kill the third row. So the REF should be 1, negative 1, and negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we can tell that x1 equals to x2 plus x3. Or in other words, the solution set x is given by x2 plus x3 x2 
x3, or if you separate each variables, that gives you x2 times 110 plus x3 times 101. So the basis for the null space of um, a minus 2i is given by the set consisting of 110 and 101. Or this is the basis for the eigenspace of a corresponds to lambda equals to 2. Okay, so this is one cool exercise about eigenvalue of some powers of the given matrix. So let's pause the video and think about how the eigenvalue of these matrices relates to the original matrix A. So suppose that you have um, eigenvector x in Rn such that Ax equals to lambda times x. Then what can we tell about um, a squared times x? Well, basically we can separate this as a times a times x. This equals to a times lambda times x. But we can factor out the scalar outside of the matrix vector product. So this gives you lambda times ax. Or in other words, we can apply this again over here. That gives you lambda squared times x. So similarly, a to the cubed times x equals to a times a squared x, which is a times lambda squared times x, or in other words, we have lambda squared a times x. Well, this gives you lambda cubed times x. So if you keep this procedure, you can tell that a to the, say, n times x equals to lambda to the n times x, or the eigenvalue for a to the k is simply lambda to the k. So note that a natural form of a matrix A does not display the eigenvalue of A, and this is because row operations changes the eigenvalues of the given matrix. So if you have um, two by two matrix given by two, negative one, negative one, and two, it is known that there are two eigenvalues, say lambda 1 equals to 3 and lambda 2 equals to 1. But if you take the REF of this matrix, then you will get, I guess, 2, negative 1, 0, and 3. But in this case, eigenvalues are given by 2 and 3. So basically, um, row operation does not preserve the eigenvalues, and we will see how to get the eigenvalues in detail in next section. But if the matrix is given by a triangular matrix, then the eigenvalue of a triangular matrix are just the entries on the main diagonal. And this is really powerful because it gives us an idea of how to find the eigenvalues. So. Let's see how it works by an example, rather than prove the given theorem. So suppose that A is given by this triangular matrix, and this is upper triangular matrix because we have a matrix of the form like this. So by definition, to have eigenvalues, we need A minus lambda I, X equals to zero, has at least one non-trivial solution, but this is equivalent to have there is at least one free variable. So if you calculate a minus lambda i, then this just gives you 3 minus lambda, 6, negative 8, 0, negative lambda, 6, and 0, and 0, and 2 minus lambda. So from here, we need to have non-pivot column, or in other words, either 3 minus lambda, or negative lambda, or 2 minus lambda, has to be 0. So you can tell that 3 and 0 and 2 should be eigenvalues for this matrix. So specifically, if a matrix A has 0 as an eigenvalue, then what can you tell about the solution set of the homogeneous equation Ax equals 0? Well, if 0 is an eigenvalue of A, 
then we have a minus 0i times x equals to 0 has non-trivial solution, or ax equals to 0 has non-trivial solution. And this is equivalent to have that the solution set has at least one free variable. So based on this observation, if 0 is an eigenvalue of the given matrix, then we can tell that there exists a non-pivot column, or in other words, um, the given matrix is not an invertible matrix. So now we want to talk about basis, about the eigenspaces. So suppose that V1 through Vr are eigenvectors that corresponds to the distinct eigenvalues lambda 1 through lambda r, then the set V1 through Vr is linearly independent. So let's think about why this has to be true. So for example, if we have three vectors, V1, V2, and V3, with V3 equals to V1 plus V2, then we have that, well, because V3 is an eigenvector quest 1 to lambda 3, A times V3 equals to lambda 3 times V3. But we know that, well, V3 equals to, well, V1 plus V2. So this gives you A times V1 plus V2. In other words, we have lambda 1 V1 plus lambda 2 V2. So if you combine these two result, then you can tell that, well, lambda 3 V3 equals to lambda 1 V1 plus lambda 2 V2. Or if you apply this relation again to V3, then we get lambda 3 times V1 plus V2 equals to lambda 1 V1 plus lambda 2 V2. But this is a contradiction. And this is because V1 and V2 are linearly independent. So something is wrong in our assumption, and the wrong assumption was V3 is a linear combination of V1 and V2. So this gives you V3 is linearly independent with um, V1 and V2. You can generalize this argument by adding more vectors until you get R number of vectors.